Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 31st of October, and today is a ferrier. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. This is chapter 1, verses 18 to 26. And it's a passage where Paul constantly says his life is in Christ. And at one point he says, I don't know whether I want to live or die. If I live, I can continue preaching the good news of Jesus. If I die, I'm closer to the Lord who gave his life for me. So he shows, an ind should we say, a holy indifference to living or dying. He is on his way to Rome uh, for his trial. He says, I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in this dilemma. I want to be gone and with Christ, which would be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a more urgent need for your sake. This weighs with me so much that I feel sure I shall survive and stay with you all and help you to progress in the faith and even increase your joy in it. And so you will have another reason to give praise to Christ Jesus on my account when I am with you again. The word of the Lord. The Gospel is from Luke, chapter 14. It repeats verse 1, but then refers, goes straight to a parable later in the chapter, verses 7 to 11. Now on a Sabbath day, Jesus had gone for a meal at the house of one of the leading Pharisees, and they watched him closely. He then told the guests a parable, because he had noticed how they picked the places of honour. He said this, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take your seat in the place of honour. A more distinguished person than you may have been invited. And the person who invited you may come up and say, Give up your place to this man. And then, to your embarrassment, you would have to go and take the lowest place. No, when you're a guest, make your way to the lowest place and sit there, so that when your host comes, he may say, My friend, move up higher. In that way, everyone with you at the table will see himself, will see you honoured. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. The man who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading shows just how much Paul is engaged and loves those who have embraced the faith in the Greek city of Philippi. And how much in, in writing to them he thinks most personally about whether he can visit them again, whether he'll be alive to visit them again. This whole question of he's right now he's in on en route to a trial in Rome and he doesn't know whether what the future will bring. But it does show that all of us can take this good sense of should we say called Christian indifference. Whatever happens, we're in God's hands. Um, whether good things or bad things happen, we're in God's hands. Um, the key things are to keep loving God and loving our neighbour. So it does come down to trying to do all we can to those that are, whoever in our lives, are our neighbours. Uh, our fam family, our friends, our parishioners, those at work, those strangers we meet. Wherever we are, we are in Christ and we are Christ to them. We represent Christ. The Gospel strikes me as one which challenges us today. It's a question of humility, and Jesus gives the parable of the wedding feast where uh, he sees all the, the guests uh, sitting high up in the table and says, no, no, um, you'll be humiliated. Far better to go down the table and then be asked to go up higher. Now, in one sense, that's just good advice to avoid humiliation. But there's a deeper meaning to it, and he gives that. All who shall be 
exalted will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And as Christians we are called to humble ourselves. But this is in such contradiction to, shall we say, modern pop psychology. Um, summed up in that famous advert for, I think it's L'Oreal um, shampoo. You're worth it. Uh, <clears throat> and we're all told we must stand on our dignity, we must stand on our value. We must always state that how valuable and important we are. Not beyond the truth, but we must fight for our own, own right to be, fight for our own place. And I think this is where there is a bit of a challenge, <clears throat> because I think so often it, that leads to the conflict of uh, I want my contribution to be recognised in this political party, in this parish, in this uh, workplace, whatever it is. We go around making sure everybody knows what we do and what our place is. Um, is that right or wrong? It's not wrong, but Paul is saying, and above all, here the Jesus is teaching us far better that we know our place, we're confident about the contribution we make, but we don't make a point of parading it or insisting on it before others. It's very different and difficult sometimes. I mean, if you had a good idea and you see everybody taking it up, you kind of want to say, that was my idea, don't forget I had that idea. But yet it becomes common property, everybody's taking it forward. Um, so th this idea of how do, what does it mean to humble oneself? As I say, it's a real challenge. Just as a, an aside, but I would bring this to you, um, in our bidding prayers, remember also three men who are going to be ordained this afternoon to the diaconate in Westminster Cathedral, and part of the wedding, um, wedding <laughs> part of the ordination service is at a certain point the litany is said and the three men lie flat on the ground, prostrating themselves in humility and saying to the Lord, whatever you call me to do, I will try and follow in humility, do what you want, uh, not looking to my own advancement, but the advancement of the church of God's kingdom on earth. Keep them in mind. We turn now to our bidding prayers. <clears throat> the response is, Lord, help us as we work. Lord, Help us as we work. God the Father has adopted us and brothers and sisters of his only Son, and through the ages has stayed with us and kept us in his love. Let us ask him for the needs of the world. Lord, help us as we work. We pray for all who plan and build our cities. Give them respect for every human value. Lord, help us as we work. Pour out your spirit on artists, craftsmen and musicians. May their work bring variety, joy and inspiration to our lives. Lord, help us as we work. Be with us as the cornerstone of all that we build, for we can do nothing well without your aid. Lord, help us as we work. You have created us anew in the resurrection of your Son. Give us the strength to create a new life and a new world. Lord, help us as we work. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Let us praise you, O Lord, with voice and mind and deed. And since life itself is your gift, may all we have and all we are be yours. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.